The biggest disruption in terms of the traditional games industry has been the introduction of mobile and browser-based games. The reason we elected to start with browser games is we saw where games were going in terms of branching out to new audiences, in particular in browser. And what we wanted to do was take our console proclivities and expertise and bring it to browser-based games as a way to offer something different to browser players. We see indie games as an inspiration because there is so much innovation going on in the indie space today that it's hard not to be influenced in a positive way by what small teams are doing with the tools that they have at their fingertips. It's fantastic. Well, tools, have, tools for creation within games have existed for a long time, and it hasn't been the, necessarily the idea du jour until maybe recently, mm -hmm. but playing games like Little Big Planet several years ago, you could go in and make your own creations with the tool set they gave you. And this, uh, this has gone all the way back to uh, decades ago, where players could take existing tool sets and make their own stuff. I, as a game player, appreciate it greatly because my biggest joy in life is creating stuff. And if I can have access to a tool set within a game and build my own stuff and share it with other people, that's awesome. And that's what I, I love to do. It's what we do at work. And as a player, if I can do it at home, fantastic. Uh, when we decide what our new franchise is going to be, it's usually, it usually goes in hand in hand with picking an audience that we think is a a reasonable audience for our expertise. So if we have a console team who is building a big budget console game, we look at perhaps the hardcore console player audience. And if, the, if our idea revolves around more shooter mechanics, then we look at the hardcore shooter audience and we ask ourselves, what does that shooter audience not have now that we could provide? Where's the opportunity for us to do something different for this audience? Our hope is that what we can bring to both browser audiences and console audiences are lessons that we've learned in both of those spaces. Certainly on Outer Knots, we are applying lessons that we've learned over the years through console design and we think providing something that just doesn't exist on Facebook when it comes to the depth and breadth that Outer Knots has. Yeah, the, game, the game industry and the game audience is evolving so quickly that you can start a game and all of a sudden a few years later find that your audience's interests have changed and it's it's a, it's a challenge that I'm not sure anybody has figured out uh, how to address yet. However, on the browser-based side, we with Outer Knots have been constantly updating the game since it went open beta a few weeks ago. And what we're seeing is get a lot of feedback from players on what they like and don't like. What's cool is that we can respond very quickly to that feedback and modify the game. And that's ultimately where all games are going to go, I think, regardless of platform. When you're in the console space, it's certainly more difficult to update your content regularly because you have to go through a more strict testing process and certification process for your patches and your DLC. But I think that's going to change. I, I look ahead and I, I think that across all platforms, we're going to see a much shorter time period between creating something or changing something and having your players experience it. Well, we have a lot of folks at Insomniac, but we do have, it, everybody's broken up into teams. And so we have small, relatively small teams working on our games. And the creation process is about communication with each other and sharing our ideas and figuring out which ones really get the team excited and also work for our audience. And it's a, it's a difficult puzzle to put together. And it's, uh, for us, we are constantly shifting things around to figure out whether or not this particular idea sings with that one thing we're trying to do better uh, than anybody else with the game, works for our internal team and also works for the audience. And when you find that magic match, it can be fantastic for the game. I think Insomnia continues to evolve. And it's not just because we make new IP all the time. We have a habit, good or bad, of looking inward and doing a lot of self-analysis and asking, are we doing things the right way? Is there a way, can we be doing things better in production, can we do, be doing things better in terms of soliciting ideas from the team and making sure that everybody's heard, and then picking an idea and running with it? These are all things that have been a challenge for us over the last almost 20 years that we continue to, we think, improve on. But as a result, because we want to be flexible and continue to evolve, we will never stop changing. Excellent.